So what you're seeing here is uh, an extract from the video I made on establishing TCP IP games with a view to having numerous goes at killing the Cow King with one character that has already killed the Cow King and another one that hasn't. Now you do need uh, the correct cables and so on or whatever but for many years I just transferred items this way because I just simply didn't know any better way of doing it. There is uh, Blood to the Barbarian. You can see he has the Immortal King set. One of a couple of characters where I played through the game. And in a moment you'll see the uh, up in the top right hand corner the TCP IP address just to show that it is in fact a TCP IP game. And it looks as if I've cast confused and I have to just say that this is a somewhat outdated skill that has uh, since been replaced by GoMule. But for many years I just simply didn't know any better. What happens when you have to transfer items by TCP IP games is that you have to establish an enormous number of storage characters. Eventually I learned about GoMule, but I'm going to show you why I have all this various number of storage characters. And the problem is that item there, the Storm Spy Giant Thresher. Now when I started collecting these items, and you're talking about 2003 here, there was no mention of Holy Grail characters. But when I eventually got a Storm Spy Giant Thresher, and I don't remember when, somehow or other, the character on which it was stored went missing. And if I go back here to Polearm characters, you'll notice that Polearm D is missing, and also Spears B is missing. It was in that Polearm D character. Eventually I found another one. But in those days you backed up all your characters to rewritable CD, which were prone to errors and somehow or other it went missing so I made the, the idea that I would try and get multiple copies of the various uniques. Now there for example is a Reaper's Toll Thresher which for some strange reason shows up in Go Mule the different graphic than it does within the game itself. If I show you some of my other storage characters there is the Cranium Basher Thundermall I found on stream and there is a Death Fathom. There is an Ethereal Six Socket Warpike and there is a six socket ethereal giant thresher. If I ever find a Zod rune, I will make Breath of the Dying in one of those. And I'll have to make a decision as to whether I go with the bigger damage of the Warpike or the greater attack speed of the giant thresher. I'd like to show you two items that uh, no longer exist in the game. One is that charm there. 12% hit recovery and all resistance is 19. I, my memory of it is that I found this charm with the very first character ever, I ever made in Diablo 2 which was a barbarian and I created a barbarian because the demo that came out for the game only contained barbarian characters and I, my vague memory was that you could play as far as the waypoint of the cold plains. So the blood moor was the only area that was there and I found it with this character. It still works. If I take that uh, charm off, you can see the re resistances do reduce by the 19 that's on the charm. As good as you can now get is that one there. All resistance is 15. And I think you can still generate hit recovery with it, but there's an example of a charm that the game no longer generates. And here's another example of an item that no longer exists. There's a newish rock stopper. I don't know when I got that one, but notice the three resistances and the boost of vitality. And here is an old rock stopper, okay, which has a boost to energy and dexterity and only one resistance and a boost to life. Though the hit recovery I think is still the same. And I just simply found this on one of the characters from many years ago. This is my former mouse pad. You can tell it's a mouse pad, it says so in the corner. I bought this mouse pad with a Windows 98 computer a few weeks before the Millennium bug was supposed to click in in the year 2000. Now people may remember it never amounted to much. I installed Diablo 2 somewhere about 2001 and started playing, but as the years have gone by I have worn the mouse pad quite shiny to the point where the mouse pointer just doesn't move much anymore. 
I've sanded it back once and that restored the correct effect of the mouse for a few weeks but I've had to give it up and simply buy another mouse pad. Bit of a pity in some ways. What you're seeing here is a photograph of my keyboard. It's a PS2 keyboard and it originally came with the same Windows 98 computer in which I first installed Diablo 2. Now back in these days you preferred PS2 keyboards to USB ones because computers didn't have too many USB ports. So you saved your USB ports for something else and used a PS2 keyboard if you could. And I've simply been buying motherboards that have the facility to accept a PS2 keyboard for about the last 20 years. I am naturally right handed but some years ago due to some minor tennis elbow problem I decided to learn to use the mouse left handed. If you wish to give this a try it took me about two weeks I think to learn to use the computer mouse equally well either hand. However as the years have gone by you can see that some of the keys have worn out. I is totally gone and U, O and P are well on the way out. So just to tell you what those keys were for, I've used the, those keys with Sigma, Chocolat and Agniastra. Key U is Bone Spear, Lightning and Fireball. Key I, the one that's most worn, is Corpse Explosion, Chain Lightning and Meteor. O is Dim Vision, Glacial Spike and Glacial Spike. And P is Amplified Damage, Frozen Orb and Blizzard. So there are my five personal signs that I've been playing Diablo 2 for a long time. I would be interested in any other players who can also provide examples that they've been playing this game for much too long. <laughs>